daunting challenges facing transgender children, I've heard many say it's the small things that often hurt the most. A teacher refusing to recognise the name they've chosen or not being allowed to use the same toilet as the gender with which they identify. So when the head of a prestigious North London school announced this week that he's consulting pupils and parents about a gender neutral uniform, allowing all pupils to choose trousers or skirts, it sounded like progress to me. It may be a small minority of children who wish to transition to a different gender. At the school in question, girls were already allowed to wear trousers. Remember, that was regarded as a horrific aberration not long ago. And it's unlikely that many male pupils will actually want to wear skirts. But we all benefit from living in a society which leaves behind the oppressive, strict gender norms of the past and recognises that gender can be fluid and ever-changing. The police have introduced gender-neutral headgear and this election could bring our first openly transgender MP. It's time schools and parents also got with the programme. I'm trying not to make eye contact with with <laughs> Nick I during. Would, I would recommend. I would recommend that it's strategy. Permanent, yes. I, <laughs> a rule for life. Um, I'm in agreement with a lot of what you say, and I have I have some beefs with some of the policies towards transgender, namely um, men who identify as women but who have male physical attributes, but entering women's prisons and things like that, which I think is a a detail we maybe don't want to go into because of the main thrust, if you forgive, the verb of your. Um, argument is that we should all be a bit relaxed about gender and accept that now in this day and age your identified gender does not necessarily match your physical characteristics and I think on the whole that's a good thing and I got a friend with a daughter at an American University a daughter who's rooming with another woman who has a penis and that is completely understood that is fine and I he as a father finds that a bit strange but right. this is where we are and but when and I was don't, at, don't you have some per personal experience of this in a, in a way Rachel? well when I was yeah. about seven yeah. I wanted to be a boy and um, I had three brothers and I thought it was incredibly unfair that I wasn't a boy and that if we, I, we had family group photos which were ugly occasions um, I was my mother would literally have to I mean force me kicking and screaming full meltdown into a dress or a skirt and I've, I still remember now the feelings of and anger you, and you, rage about it. Let me ask you, do you regret that you didn't No. Boy? So my point is, you know, I think these a lot of these things can be phases but one just has to be sensitive to I, the, I, just, I, just, I think I just, the customer I just, is genuinely right. I just right. want to bring in what the headmaster yeah. at the school said since we've been talking about this school. Um, he said, explaining why he's doing this, if they feel happier and more secure in who they are, it must be a good thing. This generation is really questioning being binary in the way we look at things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think that it's important to distinguish as well between kind of tomboy phases, which do happen, and gender dysphoria, which is a specific yeah. medical condition. Yeah, and I definitely didn't have it. I so, and children clear. who do have that, there is a real question about the best way to deal with it. Okay, can I get very I'm, 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 I'm desperate to come in, yeah. There's a, I don't know if you're aware, there's a, there's a new um, study out in America by a guy called Dr. Paul McHugh. Just listen to what he says about kids and gender. He says, and this is, a, this is years of a long study, he says, only a minority of children who express gender, atypical thoughts or behaviour will continue to do so into adolescence, there is no evidence that such children should be encouraged to become transgender, much less subjected to hormone treatments or surgery. He also says that there is much disquiet about Obama's um, um, policies about transgender. He is saying there is potential that such policies res will result in the prolonged identification as transgender for students who otherwise would naturally have grown out of it. And that's what scares me in this. You grow out of your, your tomboy face. Kids will. And I think we have to take notice of the kids in the school. The kids in the school have written to the headmaster. One's saying they've never known a boy in the school who wants to wear a skirt. Two saying, let kids develop. Let, let them leave them to their own devices and let them be what they need to be. This is I think this is terrifying. I think it's dangerous because we, we could we could be pushing kids into a gender corridor where they they're told it doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman, it doesn't matter what I, before you before I bring the rest of you in. I just want to say that the expert that you quoted, Carol, uh, Dr. Paul McHugh, is a very controversial figure. So I think it's important to put put that in context and how we all judge his credibility. But I'm quoting this study on this well, issue. Well, I, I want to quote the uh, director of the Gender Identity Service, which is the only one in the country that treats children who um, have gender dysphoria or, or transgender. And, and this is how she's described their approach.
She said the majority of our users do not take up physical treatment yeah. through our service and any decisions around hormone treatment needs time and considered thought. The long-term health and psychosocial well-being of young people is always our priority. So this isn't just about rushing kids into a clinic yeah. and getting surgery and hormone treatment. this has become a big done. subject. This is, this is a subject now. There are 650,000 transgender people in this country. That accounts for 1% of the population. Of that 1%, the minutest amount of number are children. And to, and to, to change our schools schools yeah. to change the landscape of this country yeah. for a handful of people when there is no proof okay. that we need to do I, that, I find astonishing. Would you have made the same argument? I mean, I think back to the early 70s when mm -hmm. the gay lib movement was really was taking off in this country and, things, and I look at what's... And, and, and your argument was used exactly then about people being gay you're going to encourage more people to be gay and the rest of it. we wouldn't That's make that true. argument but you today you don't grow out of being gay you you can well, grow you out of you thinking don't. you want to be a boy or a girl and what scares me there was a, an interesting interview on telly yesterday it was Piers Morgan who did it where he was talking about the landscape of the country changing he said okay so you have a criminal in a courtroom and the criminal has a penis and the criminal is uh, is is non-binary and says, I don't want to go to a man's prison. What do we have to do then? I think it's unfair, Carol, everything. to bring in prisons when we're talking about how to deal well, we with children. We're talking and about we're not even talking gender. about surgery or anything. We're, we're talking, talking about, about children wanting to express their gender identity. And one thing I would say in response to you, you know, it is a small percent. Nobody's saying that this is going to be a majority of people. But oh. for that small percent, it's a really serious issue. You know, half of transgender people in this country attempt suicide before their 26th birthday. I want to look at the aspect of children because I think, look, anyone who's genuinely suffering from gender dysphoria or any of those issues needs, of course they need help and they need sympathy, but my concern is the extraordinary increase in figures that the, the attitude that people like you perhaps without realising are fostering. You mentioned the Gender Identity Development Service. Well, thanks to the Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust, let me run you through some of the figures. The number of under 18s referred to that service in 2016 to 2017 was 2016. Okay? The number of under 18s referred in 2009-2010 was 97. Now, although I'm quite good at maths, I haven't got Diane Abbott here with me to work out what percentage that is, but that's quite, quite an uptick. Finally, the same development service and the same foundation trust. Here's the breakdown. 21, for 2016, 2017, 21 were five-year-olds, nine were four-year-olds, and one was a three-year-old. Now, people like you, we need people like you, Afa, because you're well-intentioned and you're kindly and you're, you're sweet, unlike Carol and myself. <laughs> so we need you, but when you have a three-year-old, embarking on possibly gender identity issues, where well, you're a mum, you're a... I mean, it is utter copplers, to choose an I've, unfortunate word. It is utterly I've, I've already, wrong. I've already read you the quote from the director of that service. A he says that the majority do not have this, any medical procedures. But they're in a system. Often, they're in a system they're in that a is system. saying it's OK, you know, don't, don't if, be, if what you, be whatever you, you want to be. If you ever, speak to, somebody, you if you ever speak to somebody who's had gender reassignment treatment, whether it's hormone blockers, which is popular among... It's what many teens want, because going through puberty and the gender, they don't feel reflected. At three? Not at three, I'm Precisely. talking about... Precisely, but the that's point, what the this fosters. The point I'm making is... it's. It's incredibly difficult to get treatment if you want it. This isn't something that's getting thrown at people. This isn't something that um, people are being forced into. And what I, I, I'm hoping we can discuss in this is, is not about um, medical treatment. It's about people being able to express their identity. And actually, I think that if schools were more relaxed about allowing people to express their identity, maybe there would be less need for medical treatment. It's because we have it's such a, rigid, such the rigid schools. They're, they're, not necessary. Necessary. they're uh, saying it's meddling. Leave it alone. If you take Nick's figures, you know, the referrals... 10, 10 to roughly 2,000, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 yeah. to roughly 2,000. 97 to 2,000. Is that because it wasn't acceptable to be referred yeah. and it is now? Or is it because actually somehow we've put another phenomenon into society and said, yeah, this is okay. Yeah. Well, isn't isn't it the this. new frontier for civil rights now? Transgender yeah, and, and identity. Is, We've yeah. done feminism. Yeah. We've done, I think it is. I as think it is. Raised, is why it, is a, it is a complex. It is yes. a complex issue. I mean, you know, and there are people like Caitlyn Jenner, um, you know, very high profile um, people who've undergone gender reassignment who have kind of normalised it to an extent. I mean, many people say this has been around forever. Now it's just becoming more acceptable, and people are exploring it. And I am not sitting here saying that we should all be sending children to surgery. Just that, actually, if we're more relaxed in schools, um, it's a and on their okay. back. No, then, then people can explore their identity without feeling they have to necessarily go down that we road. Got, we got to leave it.